The Columbia Broadcasting System presents the Mercury Theater in a special series of broadcasts about the other Americas produced by Orson Welles. <laughs> Hello, Americans. I stand here in a room of a building in this modern city, surrounded by streets and planning and the shadows of monuments. There are parks here, playgrounds and plazas, churches, cathedrals, and holy air. There are marketplaces, laughter of people, electricity, motor cars, the singing of women, Age is here, and the wisdom of it. Time is here, in the stillness of the land. Time surrounds the city with huge hills, snow-covered, solemn. The conquistador lies below us now, beneath the foundation of the buildings, beneath the stones of the city he lies. All the weapons of slavery are dust in the earth. The chains, the lances the cannon, the hard skulls, all are packed down by the weight and anger of centuries. There were graves in Mexico for tyrants then. There is room for graves still. He who comes to conquer this soil will learn to sleep under it forever. A mile from where I stand, the voice of Moctezuma spoke. His palace is now one side of the Plaza Mayor. In the subsoil of the Plaza Mayor, the Aztec calendar stone was found. Piedra del Sol, the stone of the sun. On its stone face are carved figures. They tell the time, the month, and year. Frozen in the giant stillness of the past. They return us to the time, to the history, to the name. To the invisible dead. Kukulkan. Quetzalcoatl. The god. Tall with white skin. He went among the people. The land is sacred. It belongs to those who work it, who plant and reap, not to those slavery is ungodly. Each man is master of his own body. There is enough in this land for all. All should be dead. I, Emperor of the Aztecs, proclaim that Quetzalcoatl be punished. Find him! Bearded one has fled. East he goes in his ship. He will be back. Will come by sea. He has set the date. He will return, bringing us freedom. The date. Set. The date was set. 1519. Almost on the day, a sail appeared in the east. The people quivered with hope. Moctezuma trembled on his throne in the mountains. The sail sagged on the mast. And a man set foot on Mexican soil. Cortez. Hernan Cortez. Gold lured him here to this very city, then called Tenochtitlan. And it stood in a clear lake like a jewel. And its temples were brighter than a hundred suns. The lake is gone. And many temples are gone. But Moctezuma walks in the blood of Mexico with all his sadness and suffering. Moctezuma, standing at the temple, facing the terrible god of war. What do they bring, these white strangers who march westwards from the coast? Shall we sharpen our flints for them? Only the wind answered. Only the silent air, with its wild omens of doom. I speak to you, O oh God of peace. What do these strangers bring? 
Do they tell you, Moctezuma? Do the gods warn of the Spaniards? The white men? Will you call out your warriors, O king? Let them enter the city. Perhaps they are children of the sun. Bring them fruit and wine. They shall know we are not cannibals. The causeway's open. And the Spaniard armor shines like the surface of the lake. The air is quiet on this day. Cortez, horseman, hero, advances to the center of the city, smiling. White visitor, be welcome. This palace belongs to you and your brethren. Rest after your fatigue. Then I shall ask what brings you visiting to our island city. I shall answer you now, great Montezuma. I have come to see so distinguished a person as yourself, to spread the wonders of your empire. We must prepare for a bold stroke. Montezuma's uneasy. He asks questions. Shall we battle their army then? No. We strike where we'll dazzle them most. We strike at Montezuma, the heart of the body. Do you dare, Conquistador? A few hundred men? A known quantity of blood? To pit against these millions? I tell you, Montezuma, this is no time to seek counsel from the stars. These men are not gods. They walk as men. They can die as men. Too late. Too late. The Spaniard strikes swiftly. The great Moctezuma, whom only the air dare touch, is learning the logic of chains. Speak, O king, for they have defiled you. They have struck at the hand of friendship. This very moment they run through the temples, looting and burning. The civilized man has come bearing gifts, Moctezuma. The Eastern world has come to save you. They prod you to the window. They have a knife at your back, O Emperor. Your people are below, impatient, deadly. Speak, Montezuma. Tell them to lay down their arms, or you'll die. Be tall at the window. Be strong. Be greater than these conquerors. Below, the Aztecs sound like a burning forest. They think you betrayed them. They throw stones. Be strong, Montezuma. For the arrows are on their way, dipped in their anger. Arrows for your heart. The blood is out. It falls. The empire bleeds. So, Cortez, is your triumph here? You're far from Cuba now, or the sea. You're in a city on a lake, and the causeways bristle with men. Mexico waits for you, conquistadores. Listen. On the open causeways they fought. The Spaniard hacking his way through the bridges pulled down. The Aztecs dragging the riders down to the water. And they fought on the bridges and under. Fought with the fury of tigers. The men from the east and these tough warriors. And the wind heavy with the odor of blood. There was no surrender. There was death and pestilence. But there was no surrender. There was ruin and desolation. And a forest of dead covered the valley of Mexico. In the history of conquest, as Genghis Khan, Napoleon, Hitler, and the rest are called great, so Cortez was great. No adventurer was ever more daring. He burnt the ships that brought his little army from Cuba so no man of his could turn back. A handful, stifling in rusty armor, they braved strange mountains, terrible jungle, and lived to assassinate a civilization. The Aztecs fell before the gun and the horse, and the slave empire of Moctezuma joined the dust of empires. So the Spaniard raped Indian Mexico and held it in chains for three centuries. Mexicans won back Mexico in the end. But the Spaniards came again. This time, a joke of history by invitation. 
Another shipload of Spaniards has come. Over 2,000 in one ship. Your grandfather is sleeping. I'm not sleeping. What is this about 2,000 in one ship? Don't try to hide it from me. I know. Mexico's been invaded again. No, Grandfather, you don't understand. Someone fetch me my rifle. Grandfather, I'll shoot through the window. These people are not our enemies. They've been fighting a civil war in Spain. I know that. You think I'm a fool? The loyalists have been defeated, Grandfather, and we're offering them a home here in Mexico. Spaniards are Spaniards. No, Grandfather, a Spaniard's a man. And there are two kinds of men in the world. Those who march forward and those who march backward. I'm 86 years old, and that's the first time in 86 years I've ever heard a member of my family say anything that made sense. Somebody fetch me a glass of wine. <laughs> Once again, the Spaniard invades the Mexican soil. But this time, he does not bring his swords and cannon. I come from Guernica, the holy city of Spain. Hitler and Franco destroyed our city, and now I am here. What work do you do? I teach Mexico how we make wine in Catalonia. I am from Barcelona. I play the violin in the Orquesta Sinfonica Nacional. I used to practice medicine in Madrid. I practice medicine in Mexico City now. I was a teacher in a Spanish university. Today, I teach here in Mexico. I'm an artist, senor. A ham artist. A ham artist? <laughs> That's one thing we never admit back in the States. Oh, see, si, ham artist. I teach Mexico a fine way to cure hams. Food, you know, hams. I've brought what I know. I've brought, too, my hatred for fascism. That hatred is shared by your adopted country, senor. By the people, by 18 million of them, by the workers and their unions, the men and women of professions, the musicians, the painters. All share your hatred of tyranny, your love of freedom. You know, and Mexicans know, that freedom is a prize hard won and easily lost. You know, and Mexicans know, that so long as somewhere freedom does not live, free men must die for it. For 300 years after Cortez, Mexico bowed her head. Then the bones of her ancestors stirred. The Indian blood, the peasant anger stirred again. From the south, the Grito de Dolores, the cry of 50,000 peasant voices, thundered their anger against the Mexican skies. Father Miguel Hidalgo, obscure parish priest, the father of Mexican independence. We are resolved to sustain man's inalienable rights. We will sustain these rights by letting rivers of blood, if necessary. Rivers of blood did flow but they left a brief red stain on a conscience of the people. And from his prison cell, the captive priest put by his beads and spoke to the sons of men. O ye who inhabit the earth, be my witness. I call you to behold the crimes which have been here perpetrated, and in my deep grief, call the whole world to see for itself the pain which is here in my land. Even before the echoes of Hidalgo's lament had died away, a new leader had arisen, a young guerrilla warrior, Jose Maria Morelos. Hidalgo was executed, but over the crash of the rifles, Morelos hurled the people's defiance. America is declared independent of Spain or any other foreign power. The seed was strong. And the soil was rich. Another man walked into Mexico... No conquistador, no fiery rider, no great king or his power behind him, but the people's power, Mexico's power, Benito Juarez. And in this city, in the Alameda, a monument stands for this man, and along the Avenida Juarez his ghost still walks. This time the conquistador was within and the people closed their terrible ring. And Emperor Maximilian learned what Cortes did. The soil of Mexico has room for tyrants. Centuries of room. This man Juarez, this lawyer with craggy face and stovepipe hat, 
Lincoln of the lower continent. What fire burned in his silent eye? His hands are hands of a peasant. His face has known a whip. The back too is bent. In school, the Spanish gentlemen turned their backs as if my Indian face was a disease. I am not bitter. I am ashamed for Mexico. Lawyer Juarez. To Governor Juarez. With the wind of war rising among his people, poverty's war. And Juarez walked through village and city, searching, keeping his faith with the people, taking his strength from the people. For he was one of them. The poor, the proud. Why are the workers on the road chained? Why are the workers in the mines chained? You see, senor, there are reasons. Besides, they are happier that way. So, a Mexican is happier in chains. You think so? Soon you shall hear a noise, senor, greater than thunder. It will be the chains breaking. <laughs> Juarez waits for the hour to strike. Waits like a boatman for the tide. Listens to the stirrings of the people. Juarez could wait. His people had waited for centuries. There was strength in waiting. And the moment had come. Juarez in exile, penniless, leaves his rooming house in New Orleans. Alone, he returns to Mexico, the center of flame. He walks through the jungles alone in his black coat to meet his army. Walking with the strength of hills. Walking with the wheel of history. By foot, by ship. Alone he comes. Welcome home, Wallace. For God and liberty. The people rise. The people wake at last. They converge toward the angry cities. The fishermen with their shining knives. The sowers of corn and cane. Farmers with scythes, the straight and the bent. From Indian towns and Spaniard towns, they came giving their blood. And blood soaked the dry earth. And man marched towards the dream of equity. Then it was Presidente Juarez speaking to the ambassador of France. You threaten me with this Maximilian. If he has landed on our coast, as you say, with Napoleon's army, tell him this. The people of the Americas know well how to receive conquerors. Tell him there is room for one more grave in Mexico. Maximilian stands on the hill of bells. In Cerro de los Campanos on this cool morning of June 17, 1867, facing his appointed rifles. Not all his royal friends could save him. Not all the voices of the sovereign kingdoms who came to plead for him. Juarez listened to the voices as they spoke. Then Juarez spoke. Maximilian must die, senores. Not for revenge, no, not for that. He dies because he is a sign of tyranny. Mexico says to the world, know that as Maximilian dies, so dies his dream and the danger of it. The people have spoken. After Juarez, the scene darkens in Mexico. And to Porfirio Diaz, tyrant, Emiliano, the food is on the table. Why do you sit there in the dark like a frightened wolf? Will you answer me when I ask you a question? I'm not hungry. Then you are sick. No. Don't turn your head away. Look at me toward the light. I... Who did that to you? A Rorale. With his horse whip? Yes. What have you to do with Rorales? 
I was at the farm of Tio Badillo when the Rurales came to take the land. What did you do? I threw a stone at a Rurale. That was a wicked thing to do. It was more wicked for the Rurales to take the land of Tio Badillo. The land of Tio Badillo is part of the Hedo. The police of Diaz do not recognize the common land. I think President Diaz is a thief. That is a dangerous thought. I have thought that thought since I was seven. Oh, an old thought, eh? Two years old. Yes. And what will you think when you are 19? I think I will kill many Rurales. And maybe even President Diaz himself. I think you will not live to be a man if you speak those thoughts aloud. Do you understand? But I can speak my thoughts to you. Yes. Yes, you can always speak your thoughts to me when we are alone and the door is closed. Now eat your supper. And let us hear no more of your thoughts until you are a man. A strong man. And to be strong, you must eat. I will eat and I will go strong. And someday the Rurales will run like chickens when they hear the name Emiliano Zapata. In my own office, without an appointment, without any warning, this flea-bitten, ragged, stinking crowd of peasants. Uh, bandits. Uh, bandits worse. A crowd of illiterate villagers who wanted to take action against the Asindados, claiming they were stealing their land. Such claims are common. Uh, the leader of these peasants... As I know, Emiliano Zapata. Yes, well, he had very little to say when I offered to call the police. Then they went quietly enough. They have no appetite for the rurales. They think because they were born on the land that it is theirs. The next thing you know, the parrots will be flying in from the jungles and claiming the mahogany trees are theirs because they were born in them. A parrot can talk, too, you know. <laughs> Emiliano, I have come from the village. They have posted a paper about you in the Plaza de Armas. What does it say? You are banished from the state of Morelos. And you are not permitted to return. On pain of death. They've made me an outlaw. Very well. Others will join us. There are still men in Mexico who do not love a dictator. <laughs> Zapata's white horse pounded like a war drum through the villages. His cry of land and freedom rallied a mighty army. Diaz died and the rich landowners replaced him with Madero. I aren't prepared to grant you full amnesty, Zapata. And more than that, I'm prepared to give you an estate of 150,000 acres. Have you not heard that I'm fighting to restore the land to the people? Yes, I have heard. I'm but... fighting for everyone. Men of Mexico! It is better to die on your feet than to live on your knees. There are those in the state of Morelos today who will tell you that the body publicly exhibited on April 10th, 1919 was not Zapata, but a wax figure. Zapata is not dead, senor. He still rides. The thunder of his horse's hoof shakes the world. He is finishing what he started. Every man will have his own foot of land. And there will be no hungry child anywhere. And the buzzards who live on death will die of starvation. The people march, asking questions. Land is poor. There is no water for the soil. Can we grow food from stone? We have many oil wells, true, but where is work for us? Our children die of disease. Why must that be? There are no schools. Must our children not be able to write their names? They say we are a rich land. Rich for whom? Tell me that. Asking, searching, taking on the democratic stature. Somebody said Mexico is the land of manana. Manana means tomorrow. And tomorrow in Mexico is no longer an excuse. Tomorrow is more now than a promise. Here is a land with the longest yesterday in the new world. And no American nation has so advanced in the third decade of our century. No American people are more solemnly consecrated to the future. Viva la revolución! 
revolution again? Yes. This time it's the National Revolutionary Party, the PNR, the CTM, the Confederation of Mexican Workers. We've arrived at the year 1934. They're cheering the new president, Cardenas, elected by the will of the majority. Cardenas! Cardenas! In 1910, there were 700 schools in Mexico, all in cities and towns. There were no schools for the children of peasants. By 1935, in the country, in the farm and cattle lands, there were 20,000 schools. The art of Mexico and Mexico's artists, Aztec and Mayan art, colonial, popular, tradition, progress, Orozco, Rivera, Sequeiro, more, many more, great painting on public walls. Murals, art for everybody, and music for everybody. Rivera, Chavez, the Orchestra Sinfonica Nacional. Popular music, folk music, mariachis, marimba bands, rancheros, boleros, the lovely ballads of the jungles, the plains, the mountains. Song and, well, we're about it, wine and women. Say nothing of food. I'd like to do a whole series of broadcasts on Mexican cooking. Listen, you can hear the great bell of a cathedral the largest bell on our continent. There's so many things I wish I had the time to talk about today. The street in honor of Louis Pasteur, the Washington Monument here, the Don Quixote Fountain, the auto trailer camp, nightclubs, museums, cathedrals, the stadium, bullfights. Another time I'm going to tell you about Mexico's new president, uh, Camacho, and Padilla's magnificent achievement at the Pan American Conference in Rio. And now it's time to say goodbye. To leave you with a message from the Republic of Mexico. We declare the sincere friendship of the workers and the people of Latin America with the great people of the United States. We defend the same cause, the cause of the people. For this cause, we continue united, and we will be courageous in the future as we have been in the past. Our flag is the Atlantic Charter. Our slogan, the inviolate right of self-determination. Liberty for each nation of the world. Progress for the working people everywhere. Liberation of all mankind. You have been listening to the eighth in a series of programs about the other Americas in which the Columbia Broadcasting System is presenting Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater. The Columbia Broadcasting System is the originator of South America's network of stations, La Cadena de las Americas. In the Southern Hemisphere, as well as in this hemisphere, CBS provides daily programs of news, entertainment, and recreation to bring about a closer understanding among Americans everywhere. Next week, the ninth program in this series will be brought to you by Orson Welles. Mr. Welles has recently returned from an eight-month visit to the Latin American countries for the office of the Coordinator of Inter-American Affairs. In the cast tonight, Laird Tregar was Montezuma, Hans Conried was Cortez, Ray Collins was Juarez, Lumero Zapata, and Agnes Moorhead, Zapata's mother. Original music tonight was composed by Lucian Moravec and directed by Lud Buskin. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>